from Korea to Germany. From Alaska to Puerto Rico. All over the world, the men and women of your army are on the alert to defend our nation, you, the American people, against aggression. This is the big picture. Welcome to the big picture, presented by your United States Army. I'm Captain Carl Zimmerman. Today, the big picture tells the story of the Army combat team. What happens in one day of war? Fighting in Korea, over mountainous country, often in freezing weather, against an enemy far superior in numbers, demanded a new combat technique. Well, today, the big picture shows you how the Army met that demand, fighting as a team, using firepower against manpower. One more day of war, and the news is lost in a two-line communique from the battlefront. But behind this colorless report is the story of the world's greatest fighting team, the American Army Combat Team, a tough and mobile assault force which can hit anywhere, anytime. This day of war has not been won by the infantryman alone, fighting his way across the nameless mountains of Korea, nor by the strategists behind him. For today, America's military answer to war is firepower, teamwork, and mobility, a shattering land, sea, and air combat machine geared and equipped to do any size job in the shortest time and with the fewest casualties possible. Guns of all caliber laying down a hail of fire. Other armies commit vast manpower resources to battle and rely on man's expendability. The American army fights a war of firepower instead of manpower. Providing that firepower, backed by the finest weapons in the world, is the army combat team, a combined assault force which relies on the sheer weight of its steel and explosives for its maximum effectiveness. The 8th Army in Korea, called the greatest army the world has ever known, earned that honor fighting the firepower and combat team technique. For out of Korea, with its snow, mountains, cold, and many military problems, has evolved a new concept for waging war. That concept is to have the best weapons, providing the biggest volume of firepower, and to keep the fighting units flexible and mobile enough to be used quickly and effectively. The combined weapons of the United States Army are superior to those of any other army in the world. The M1 Garand rifle, basic weapon of the infantryman. The Browning automatic rifle, ripping off 500 rounds a minute and providing accurate fire against enemy soldiers. Rocket launchers, better known as bazookas, capable of punching a hole through nine inches of steel and blasting fortifications, gun emplacements, and tanks. Machine guns, the backbone of infantry firepower, light and heavy, able to deliver large volumes of continuous fire. Mortars, workhorse of the front line, ready to lob shells up and over the enemy's defenses. And the miracle weapon of them all, the recoilless rifle, an easy firing weapon packing the punch of an artillery piece. These are the weapons which give the army command of the battlefield, weapons unequaled in the world for firepower, mobility, and accuracy. And backing the infantrymen and those weapons is the rest of the combat team, tanks, artillery, and planes of the Air Force. Patrols are sent out to find the enemy as preparations for combat begin. Observation posts make their reports, enemy bunkers are sighted, and the patrol leader refers their position to the artillery. The early morning quiet
command is shattered as salvo after salvo saturates the enemy position. From somewhere in the air, the sound of a lone plane is heard, and the waiting infantrymen on the ground know that a last-minute air reconnaissance is being made. These army observers take to the air in small aircraft to spot targets for artillery and obtain information about the enemy. Carrying no armament of any kind, these grasshoppers daily penetrate far behind enemy lines, gathering intelligence reports. The attack hour approaches and the combat team readies itself. is fed into the guns. Tank engines roar into action, drowning out the whine of artillery shells overhead, and together the armored infantry unit moves out. The tanks and the infantrymen fight together as a team, making up for each other's shortcomings. Protecting the men on foot, the tanks probe and patrol ahead, ready to defend the team of soldiers at its side. At the same time, the ground troops protect their tank from enemy fire and assist it by directing its gunfire to strategic areas. A telephone connected to the back of the tank welds the separate members into a fighting team. By fire and movement, our army advances. While tanks and machine gun crews lay down a blanket of fire to keep the enemy pinned down, the attacking force pushes forward, killing and routing the enemy and knocking out emplacements. If enemy resistance cannot be broken by the soldier on foot, the tank is there to move ahead and blast the objective with its heavier firepower. Aiding the infantryman in his dangerous mission are the mortars and the artillery, which bring down a curtain of death just in front of the advancing troops. Directed by their own forward observers, the artillery and mortar units inch their fire slowly forward, wiping out opposition from the path of the tanks and the infantry. As the frontline men advance, so the gunners adjust their sights and continue to pour out the bombardment. Supply roads are blocked and reinforcements are sealed off. When difficult terrain makes it impossible for our tanks to fulfill their task, and the enemy cannot be flushed from his positions, teamwork in combat again answers the emergency. The word is passed back for tactical air support. Awaiting their call to action are the F-51s and jets, which carry the firepower technique into the air and support the ground forces with pinpoint bombing. Integrated with the ground tank infantry artillery team, these planes add to the combined firepower. They are armed with six 50 caliber machine guns and 10 five inch rockets. The planes also carry napalm and demolition bombs. The pilots receive their final instructions and get up to the minute information on the latest tactical situation. Then, the pilots join the combat team. In a matter of 
minutes, the planes take off for the combat zone to do from the air what cannot be done from the ground. Mustang fighters, veterans of World War II, are still preferred for cover by ground forces because they can remain over the lines longer than the faster jets. With speed and accuracy, they dive on the target, strafing the enemy, bombing and burning him out. By using the latest communication devices, pilots can soften up the enemy within yards of their infantry buddies. One of these devices is the Air Ground Liaison Team. Talking directly to the pilots by radio from a jeep, a ground observer helps the planes pinpoint the target. Hand in hand, the ground and air units join in combined attack using teamwork to keep the assault rolling. More than ever before, the Army is today using the air to link its fighting units. The role of the helicopter in combat has far outgrown the expectations of the strategists who first used it, and more and more these copters are being used for battle missions. Reinforcements rush to weak points in the line. The wounded are speedily carried to medical aid strapped to the sides of the helicopter. To the men on the line, these copters have become messengers of life or death. Rushing ammunition to cut off units, evacuating the wounded, and carrying the fight across impassable terrain, the helicopters strengthen the lifeblood of the fighting man. Assault teams fully armed for battle can hop from mountain to mountain, preparing the way for the troops that follow. In warfare today, mobility of firepower is the key to victory. Recognizing this important factor, the Army has made the regimental unit its core in combat. To act quickly in battle, the Army has given the regimental unit its own command and the necessary firepower backing to do any job. These regimental combat teams assigned their own tank and artillery forces have become the backbone of America's fighting army. Instead of an unwieldy army organized for action at divisional or corps level, America's fighting force is now split into fast-moving, highly mobile attack teams of regimental strength, which have their own supporting artillery and heavy weapons units. In General Ridgway's own words, the new tactical trend is this. We are not interested in real estate. We are interested only in inflicting maximum casualties on the enemy with minimum losses to ourselves. To do this, we must wage a war of maneuver, slashing at the enemy when he withdraws and fighting delaying actions when he attacks. Doing this job is the Armored Task Force Team. 